Rotten. Good. Rotten. Rotten. Definitely rotten. Uh, I think that one's good. Oh, hey! So today we're talking about something pretty interesting. Disc rot. What is disc rot and does it exist? Stick around, we'll be right back. So just what exactly is disc rot? Well, there's a lot of conversation out there on an almost daily basis in video game groups on Facebook and stuff. I see people that have just recently heard about disc rot and have become very concerned about the future of their physical media and whether there's going to come a point at which all of it is unplayable. Uh, is that the case? Well, you know, yes. At some point, a lot of this physical media is going to become unplayable, and that's why there is a good argument to be had for the entire preservation aspect of ROMs and uh, you know making sure that you have digital copies and digital backups, despite all of the legal ramifications of that. However, disk rot is not what you think. Most people seem to think that disk rot or disks in general tend to have a degenerative disease. In other words, that all discs are slowly degrading to the point of unplayability, and that is just not the case. There are a couple of different situations where disc rot, so-called disc rot, can occur. Uh, disc rot mostly occurs from poor manufacturing processes like substandard adhesives which are used between the layers in the disc which do tend to break down or have a chemical reaction between the plastic and the adhesive in the disc which does eventually render the disc unplayable. You can look at certain discs and if you look uh, real close and shine a light on the disc you can sometimes see what look like tiny little pinholes in the disc and that is a pretty good indicator of disc rot and you may find that the disc does become unplayable relatively quickly and it still looks pretty fine you know you've got uh, no scratches whatever you would think it would play but it just won't and there are situations where that does exist however Disc rot is not what you think. Disc rot, or the degradation of a disc, is caused primarily by two things. Either poor manufacturing processes, which are on a case-by-case -case basis. Not every disc is going to fall prey to this. So there are certain discs out there, like for example the Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes game uh, on the GameCube, which does tend to have a lot of problems because of poor manufacturing. The label would split and crack on it, and uh, there would be problems from the top side of the disc, which w would eventually affect the bottom side of the disc, and it will become unplayable. Uh, there are other discs out there that suffer from problems like that, particularly several on the GameCube, uh, some on the Dreamcast, some on the Sega Saturn, especially as known for some bad discs. However, really the only way to take a properly manufactured disc and make it unplayable is through environmental situations. So for example, if you take a disc and you put it face up on the dash of your car in the summer in the southern United States where your car gets to be 150 degrees with the windows closed, yeah, the UV light is going to damage the disc. If you scratch the hell out of the disc, if you submerge it in water or chemicals, if it is uh, subjected to uh, extremes of temperature and humidity, for example, if you store it uh, you know, in a cardboard box in a garage or shed for years on, time, on end, you will find that the extremes of temperature and humidity up and down between winter and summer, uh, putting it in a hot attic or a cold garage or somewhere that's very moist like a backyard shed, you will find that there will eventually be some delamination of the discs and as soon as uh, air gets in there, uh, you will find that the layers inside, the foil layer, will oxidize and you'll have a chemical reaction with some of the adhesives and stuff that are in there. However, if a disc is properly looked after, uh, and 
The key to any collectibles, and discs are no exception, is that they need to live where you live. If you are comfortable at room temperature, so they call it 72 degrees or 18, 17, 18 degrees, 20 degrees, whatever you're comfortable at is probably the same range that your collectibles are going to be comfortable at. That same level of temperature and humidity that most people carry in their homes on the main floor, so you're not storing it necessarily in a cold, unfinished basement. You're not storing it in the attic or the garage. If you keep your discs in the temperature and humidity controlled portion of your house and you look after them, you put them right back in the cases when you're done playing them, uh, you know, it doesn't matter whether you store them vertically or horizontally, that's kind of a myth, um, but absolutely, discs can last a very, very, very long time. I would expect a lot of these discs to outlive you. The main thing to figure out is disc rot, as it is, is not something you need to be afraid of if you know the chain of command of your game, you know how it's been treated for its entire lifespan, and you just generally take care of it. You have it on a shelf in your living room or your man cave, uh, you know, you take it out, you play it, you put it away, it's not going to degrade on you. Please do not worry, do not get freaked out about disc rot. This is not something that happens across the board, it is only something that happens under certain conditions, either poor manufacturing or poor storage and handling one or the other. Anyways guys, sound off in the comments what your stories with disc rot are. Let's try to get to the bottom of this. Uh, by all means, like the video if you haven't, it helps out a ton. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay classy.